brothers and sisters today, God in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. Well, I have to say that for several weeks I've been asking the Lord, what am I going to talk about today? And I had nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the more I asked, the less I had. I had lots of things in my head, but it was not what God wanted to speak. So <clears throat> I got the answer on Monday. So I'm going to share with you something. Um, I woke up Monday morning and the Lord had put something on my heart. He had um, told me to ring Helena and to ask for favour for somebody I know, somebody I care very deeply for. And by the way, I have her permission to share this today. She was so excited she wanted me to share. Um, so I woke up and we have, many of us have met Prophet Raju over the last several weeks since he's been here. And I had on my spirit to contact him to pray for my friend. Now this lady, Anne, um, used to come here on a Wednesday, but she had a stroke just over 12 months ago. And in this 12 months, she has had it hard. Her husband now is her carer for every need that she has. She cannot do anything for herself. Um, he has done an amazing job, but as you can imagine, there are difficulties there because she's having to rely on him for everything. And he is having to do everything. And it's, it's hard, it's tricky. And we have had many hours of prayer, her and myself, um, with Bianca, with Helena. We have prayed and we have, and I have prayed till I've had no prayers left. And I was actually saying to the Lord, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong that she's not receiving what she needs? And another dear friend of mine has also been going through things and I've been asking the question, Lord, how can I do more? Now, he's not asking me to do more. That's me. That's my, um, my inadequacy, inadequacies in my life. That's what I'm dealing with. Now, Prophet Raju gave me a word the other day. He said, God is doing an inner healing with you. And I said, oh, fantastic. What is that? What are you healing? But I realised over the last week it's emotional things with me. But when we talked here a few weeks ago about doubt and unbelief, and my, my six things on my list were, I don't hear from God correctly, I don't listen to God correctly, I don't act correctly, I'm not, he doesn't speak to me, he doesn't do things through me, and I know these are incorrect. I know this is from the enemy's camp, sent to keep me uneven, to keep me out of whack. So... I had to then ask the Lord, what is going on? But on Monday morning, he put on my heart to make the phone call. And I said, Lord, if this is not from you, dismiss it. But if it is, I ask that it comes and it works to your glory. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I made the phone call. I asked and said, is it possible for my friend to have a phone call with Prophet Raji? And I got notification a little bit later, he's coming to visit her. And I thought, Lord, wow. I offered to go and get him, to drive him there. So that was an hour from my house to his house where he's staying, an hour and a half from there to her house, an hour and a half back and an hour, hour home. And I thought, I can do that. I don't care if it takes 12 hours. I don't care if I've got to sleep in my car. I'm doing what I believe is the right thing to do. So I hadn't said anything to her at this stage because I didn't want to get her hopes up. I didn't want her to get all excited if something didn't pan out. So when I got notification that he had actually cancelled a previous appointment to go to see her, I thought, wow. I rang her and she squealed at me and she said, God loves me that much. He is sending a prophet to pray for me. And I said, exactly, exactly, that's what he's doing. 
So that was on the Monday. Tuesday morning, she rang me very early and she said, oh, I'm so excited I didn't sleep. Now, not sleeping has been part of her recovery because she has to get up to go to the toilet. It means they get the machine to lift her up, to take her to the toilet, to put her back into bed. She's wide awake. Her husband's wide awake, so they don't sleep. So this is an issue. And I said, are you okay? She said, no, 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 I am so excited. And I said, why are you excited? She said, I am going to the beach. I am going to take my shoes and socks off. I'm going to wear shorts and I'm going to paddle in the water. And I said, are you just? And she said, oh, yes, and I don't care how cold it is. I have been waiting so long for this. I'm going. So I was smiling about this because I thought, this is a very different phone call from what I usually get. She had already stood in her healing. Okay? She had stood in healing already. Hadn't even happened. The prayer hadn't happened. He hadn't visited. Nothing had happened. But she was standing in her prayer acceptance. And I thought, wow, I am just so blessed for this. So... On Tuesday morning, I made sure I was on time, got up early. I arrived at his um, destination about three quarters of an hour early. I didn't want to be late. So um, I waited, picked him up and drove there. Now that morning, she had her first hydrotherapy session. Nobody had been pushing her to exercise and she was, getting, she was in more and more and more pain. And the week before, I said to her, why aren't you doing hydrotherapy? And she said, that's a really good question. Nobody wants me to do it. You're the first person who's mentioned it. I said, well, come on, off you go. Get on with it. So I had said to her on the Monday, your appointment is Wednesday. And she said, oh, no, I can't do that. And I said, why? She said, I've got hydrotherapy. And I said, hey. You can either have your hydrotherapy or you can have a prophet who God sent from India to come here and speak to you. Which one do you want? And she said, the prophet. I said, exactly. So we can cancel the hydrotherapy. She said, oh, that won't work. My husband's not going to like that. You speak to him. Okay. And she said, here, speak to her. Oh, okay. I didn't even have time to think about what I was going to say. And I said to him, you told me she need a prayer. He said, that's correct. And I said, we've arranged it. It's been arranged from a prophet who is coming, has come to Australia. He is coming to your house to pray for your wife. And he said, any day but Wednesday. I said, buddy, it's Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry. And he said, but we've got plans. I said, cancel them. This is more important. And he said, wait a minute. What time? Are you bringing him here? And I said, well, an hour and a half, possibly, 11.30. He said, oh, we'll be done by then. We'll be done. We'll be home. I said, all right. So I didn't go over the speed limit, just under. And um, Prophet, he was making phone calls and he was praying and he had a bit of a nap and, you know, and in the car we were fine. And we've pulled up and there's no car in their driveway. And I went, oh, Lord, really? I had been praying that this would all be timely, in God's timing. And we got there and I rang and I said, you're not here? She said, no, we've been caught up, but we'll be there in five minutes. And her husband in the background said, 20. And I, oh, okay, fine. It's all good. God's in charge, not me. And I said, may we walk around your property? And she said, oh, please feel free. Well, we had the best walk. They've got um, 64 acres. So we wandered and we enjoyed the sunshine. And we saw a fox in the distance with a, a leg that wasn't working. And he, he was so distressed about this poor fox. And I turned around and looked and the fox just jumped up and took off at a million miles an hour. And I thought, there you go. God is just working here. Eventually, I got a phone call from Anne to say, where are you? We're here. We're sitting in the house. Where are you? I said, we're just wandering. We'll be back. So we get there, we introduce, and he came in and he spoke to her. Now, what he said is her business, and the day she wants to give that account, it's up to her. So I'm just leading you into this. 
we finished there. He said, we're going now. We were up and we were at the car before people had even come to say goodbye. Prophet was on a mission. And I said to him when we got back into the car, I can take you to the beach if you'd like to look at the beach. I can take you to lunch. I can take you to upper room. And he said, lunch, then upper room. And I said, well, actually, they're having lunch at upper room right now. He said, then we'll go there. And we just turned up much to everybody's surprise because it was not planned. It was not planned. So I just want to share this with you. The point I'm making here with Anne was the excitement as she stood before she got the prayer. She stood in acceptance before it happened. She received it before it happened, before a word had been spoken. And Prophet had said to her, I've been praying about you and this is what God has to say. And it was amazing. And as I said, that's her. She will talk about that when she's here. So it reminded me of something that had happened to me several years ago. I was here. I had damaged my left shoulder, had prayer for it, and it repaired. Praise God. Then my right shoulder went out in sympathy. And it didn't matter how many times I had prayer for this shoulder, it would not stay healed. I would do something and the pain would be back. Something would happen and it was playing up. And I said, Lord, I'm done with this. I woke up one Sunday morning. I said, I'm done now. I am having prayer today. I don't care who prays for it, but I receive the healing for this shoulder today and it's not going to go out again. I'm done. I had a little temper tantrum. I stamped my foot and I said, now, Daddy, I'm done with this. This is taking up too much time. It's taking up too many thoughts and it hurts. I'm not doing this anymore. So I came here and I thought, I'm going to grab Helena, get her to pray for me about my shoulder. And another pastor who had just been recently ordained said, on the way here this morning, I was asking the Lord for someone to pray for. And he showed me someone with a right shoulder pain. And I'm going to pray for it and I'm going to lay hands and they're going to be healed. And I sort of went, hmm. That wasn't in my plan, but that's okay, Father God. I said I was standing in the healing. That's it. So he stood up and he said, does anyone want prayer? And nobody moved. And I'm still talking to the Lord about this. And I'm saying, thank you, Daddy. You've healed my shoulder. I'm healed today. We're not going to go back. We're not going to have any problems. This shoulder is done. It's fixed. It's dusted. Hallelujah, I'm done. And Helena stood up and said, is there anybody in this room who has a sore right shoulder? Now she was standing here. At the time there was a chair here and that's where I was sitting. And I looked at her and I said, me. And she said, who is it who's got a sore shoulder? I looked at her a second time and I said, me. A third time she said, come on, who is it who's got the sore shoulder? And I said, me. She said, well, don't just sit there, stand up. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, as I stood up, I said, Daddy, thank you. I received, and as I'm walking forward, none of this was here at that time. As I'm walking forward, I'm receiving the healing from my shoulder. And another woman on the other side of the room, she stood up. And he started to pray for her and he stopped mid-sentence, looked at me and said, you need to believe in God's healing. And I nodded, yes. And he said, you don't understand. You need to believe in God's healing. Yeah, um, I'm pulling faces by now because I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I believe in God's healing. He said, you don't understand, you need to believe in God's healing. And with this, my face, because I'm talking to Father God at the same time, saying, Daddy, what is he talking about? Is this man not well? You know I believe in healing. You see, um, it would have been about seven years earlier, 
I'd been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and the doctors had given me six months to live. I was so ill, I was dying. Now, Bianca is sitting over there. She can attest to this because she had to drive me to the specialist the day he gave me my death sentence. We were there together. Then I had to share it with my aunt, my uncle, my husband. She knew. I was sick. I ca uh, another friend arranged for me to be water baptised and said, oh, I know a woman, she can do it for you. She's a pastor, but we don't know where she is, but we'll drive around and find her. And they did. <laughs> and they turned up because Helena was out the front gardening. And she said, I will baptise her. So I came in. I couldn't, by then, three days after the death sentence, I could barely walk. My body had started to die. I could not drive. I could not walk. I was so heavily medicated because I was self-medicating. The pain was so bad, I was self-medicating because I knew better than the doctors. And I'll tell you what, I did a better job than they did. I, um, and I was only taking what they had given me plus Nurofen. Nurofen had been my, my anchor for over eight months. The pain was so bad. Helena, what about ties me? I said to her, please don't let go of me because I, I'll drown. I, I was so frightened of drowning in a swimming pool because I had no strength in my body. I stood looking at the edge of the pool thinking, how am I going to lift my leg? It was only a yay high and I could not lift my leg over to get in. And I thought, if they drop me, I will drown in this pool. And then I have to ring my husband and say she's dead because she's drowned. <laughs> anyway, Helena laid hands on me. Father God, uh, and please let me reiterate this. It wasn't Helena, by the way. Helena was obedient. That was her part in it. Just like Prophet Raju. The obedience of the prophet. Helena, Raju. So, she laid hands on me, baptised me, and said to me later, did you feel something leave? Yes, I did. And she said, you did? I said, yes, I did. They opened me up two weeks later and cancers were gone. The two tumours on my ovary were gone. There was no cancer in my body. Okay, I didn't know to be faithful in what he was doing then I wasn't born again I didn't know the Lord but now I do and the Lord has healed me of so many different things in my life but I always give thanks before he does it because that has become a habit with me I know that works Amen. so what we did um, pastor again standing here wanting to pray for me and as he's telling me, you need to believe, you need to believe, you need to believe. And he took a step back. And I took two steps forward. Because I'm like, what are you doing? I, I don't understand what you're doing to me. He stopped. He prayed for me. And of course, my, my shoulder was healed. See, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with my shoulder. And it's been perfect ever since. But I watched him then praying to this other lady. And I... She received her prayer and I, Lord, what was this about? What have I done wrong? I don't know about everybody else, but I turned to me first. What have I done wrong? What haven't I done? What should I have done? Why are you telling me that I need to believe? You have healed me of ovarian cancer. I'm a walking, talking miracle. Why are, why are you saying I need to believe? Because I do. And a friend I took home and I said to her, can we talk about the white elephant in the room? And she looked at me and she smiled and I said, why did he keep saying to me, you need to believe? She said, of all the people I know at Upper Room who come here, you're the one person I would never question on whether you believe in healing. And I said, me too. Anyway, dropped her off got in the car, started to drive home. Daddy, what are you telling me? What are you telling me? He said, it wasn't for you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, 
the other woman who stood up in prayer, she wasn't believing in the healing. And I couldn't talk to her because she would have shut down. He said, I used you to teach her. And I said, well, in that case, I'm a, ha I'm a happy girl. I'm a happy girl. So long as I haven't done anything wrong. And he said, no, 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 I used you. So I was quite happy with that. I was happy that she was able to receive her healing. Now, I hadn't spoken to this pastor for a couple of months. And when I saw him, I said, I've got something to say to you. And he sort of did this again. I thought, why is he reacting to me that way? And I said, do you remember that day? He said, oh, I remember that day. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, oh, you were so angry. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you look like you're going to punch me in the face. And I said, I wasn't going to punch you in the face. He said, that's what it looked like. He said, didn't you see me step back? And then you came at me. And he said, I was so frightened you were going to hit me. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. That was not my intention. And he said, well, that's what it felt like. And I said, no, no, no. I just couldn't understand what you were saying to me. I didn't make sense in my, in my spirit. It didn't make sense. And he said, well, now we know what was happening. And I said, yeah, fantastic. So today, as I'm sharing this with you, I felt the Lord was giving me scripture. And I read out of the King James Bible, but he had me do it a little bit differently last night. So as my friend Anne was standing on the same biblical promises that God gives each and every one of us, she was standing on his promises, just as I had done the day with my shoulder. So in Isaiah 53, 5, in the King James Version, it says, And with his stripes we are healed. Amen. We know this. Everybody in the room is doing this right now. We're all nodding in agreement. Yes. But interesting, in the complete Jewish Bible, it says, And by his bruises in fellowship with him we are healed. In fellowship, we are healed. And I thought, wow, I really like that. It is different, and it is. It's true. In fellowship with him. We come before him. He speaks to us. He heals us. He sends people to do his bidding in fellowship. Wow. I looked then at uh, Psalm 139.4, and David says, you are so familiar with all my ways that before I even speak a word, Adonai, you know all about it already. Wow. That he knew all about the stroke. He knew all about the trouble that it was causing for her husband, for herself. He knew all about it even before she uttered a word, even before we spoke and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. In 1 John 5.14, it says, This is the confidence we have in his presence. If we ask anything that accords with his will, he hears us. We know that. We know it, but we don't step into it. In 1 Peter 3.12, it says, For Adonai keeps his eyes on the righteous and his ears open to their prayers. He sent her a prophet who came from India to pray for so many different groups, so many people, and he chose the prophet to speak to my dear friend to heal her. That is just so awesome. In Deuteronomy 31.8, it says, But Adonai, it is he who will go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. So don't be afraid or downhearted. During this period of the stroke, she has been afraid. She has been so afraid. She has been so downhearted. But praise God, he has now done what he promised to do for her. This is just such a wonderful thing. And Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in Adonai with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will level your paths. It is just slightly different in the Jewish Bible, and I thought this has touched me so much 
Because we know these scriptures. You may not know where they've come from, but you've heard the word of God over and over in our lives. And this to me was just a, an aha moment. This was just amazing for me. So do I know why my friend had to go through this? No, I don't. Do I know why she wasn't healed straight away? No, I don't. But I know that God knows. He has it in hand. He knows what he's doing. I don't have to know. He told me once many years ago, it's a need to know basis and you don't need to know. And I thought, okay, I received that. I received that as someone who wants to know everything. I don't need to know. So she had recognised God's hand through the coming of the prophet. She had seen that her prayers over 12 months, and there have been so many prayers, that she saw God's hand in that. She saw what he had organised, what he had orchestrated, and she was walking in the receiving of that prayer. Before it even happened, before he even stepped foot in her house, she was down at the beach, walking in the water, where she hasn't been able to stand. And then she was off, and she was paddling, and I could see her splashing and kicking in the water in my spirit. And I thought, wow, Father God, this is just so awesome. So as many, you know, as I just spoke about my story, you know about what's happened to me. And I too stand in this belief that God knows what he's doing. I stand in the prayers before the prayers have even been spoken. I receive them, I accept them, and I, in my own little way, I demand them. I do. I'm really quite forthright in this. I demand to have the healing that my Father's Word says I'm entitled to have. It says so. The Scriptures, and I only pulled out half a dozen there are dozens of scriptures that reinforce this. We are entitled to it. We are. We had our Lord who died on that cross at Calvary so we could have what the Word of God says. But how many of us are actually standing in it? How many of it as how many of us actually receive the prayer, receive the healing, receive the financial um um, blessing, receive everything before we've actually asked for it. How many of us are receiving? Yet we stand in um, a receiving lines and we stand saying, yes, Father, yes, Father, I will take everything you've given me. Yeah, but I don't really believe it. Here, here where we see so many miracles, signs and wonders, and people will have a prayer here and walk straight out there and say, oh, that didn't work. I have listened to so many people over the years. That didn't work. That didn't happen. You've had a risk. You, your limbs have grown. No, no, no. That didn't work. I saw it. The prophet said to me, watch this. I saw it happen. No, no, no. It didn't happen. People, I want prayer for my eyesight. Praise God. Oh, yeah, that didn't work. Okay, no, you're right. It didn't work because you didn't receive it. Father God gave it, but you didn't receive it. How many times have people said, oh, I'm receiving the healing and I'm waiting for the doctor to call me so I can go to hospital? And that's like, <laughs> did you just hear what you said? Um, how many people say, oh, yes, I want healing, I want healing, but... This doesn't work. My hip doesn't work. I need a hip replacement. I need Really? You've just had the creator of the universe tell you through his word, I'm going to heal you. And you're saying, thank you very much. I'm going to the hospital. Yeah. I'm waiting for a bed. I'm waiting for a doctor. I'm waiting for the tablets to kick in. I'm waiting for all of these things. I'm not waiting for God. I'm not rejoicing with what he's saying, I'm just waiting for all the natural stuff to fall into place. And today, I'm going to challenge you. What is it that you're waiting for 
and you want prayer for, and are you going to receive it before it happens? Are you going to stand there and say, thank you, Daddy, I'll take that. I know you want to heal me. I know you want the very best for me. I'm having it. I'm not going to listen to the doctors. I'm not going to listen to the bad reports. I'm not going to look at my bank account. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not worrying about where my next payment is going to come from because you have it in hand. Are you going to stand up and accept it before it even happens, before it manifests? Things have to manifest. And are you going to do it? This is my challenge to you. This is my challenge to myself, always. Am I believing on what I'm asking for? Am I believing that my Abba is greater than all things on this earth? Amen. He created them all. Amen. He knows the bad from the good, the, the ugly from the beautiful. He knows it all. Do I stand in my belief of him? And my understanding of him. Do I stand with my king? Yeshua, Hamashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth. He is my king. Do I believe what he is saying to me? Do I believe that he died on the cross for my sins? Do I believe that his blood washed me whiter than snow? Do I believe he wants the very best for me in my life? Do I believe that the Holy Spirit has been sent and he speaks to me and says, do you believe? Am I going to believe them or am I going to believe my little me? My little me lies to me. Lies to me. We all tell ourselves lies because we don't want to step into the glory of God, the glory of his grace and his mercy. And I know... Today, many people are struggling with this. But I challenge you. This is a challenge. This is a time of the Lord's miracle signs and wonders. Are we going to step into it? Or are we going to sit back and doubt? The time of doubt is finished. We don't have time to doubt anymore. It's time now to pick up and move on. When we moved into this building, the weekend we moved in, people started to speak over the, what was going to happen in the future. And one of the prophets said, said there would be a driveway full of wheelchairs and crutches. They would be there because people would come in and leave healthy and well and perfect. And I am so disappointed this hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Yet. Because we're not standing in God's promises yet. But we need to do it. And it's not just one person. It's each and every single one of us needs to do this. So, I thank you for listening. I hope that you have, I trust that you have taken something from this today. That you're not going to feel doubtful and unbelieving in what God is promising. Because you need to listen and read his word and see these promises. And they're not conditional. Abba is not conditional in his love. He's not conditional in his promises. They're there for each and every one of us. But are we going to step into it? Or are we going to believe our own lies? And the lies of the enemy. So, I thank you all. Have a blessed day.